factor of the polynomial, p of x equal to 3x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 3x minus 2, completely over the complex numbers. My method is going to be grouping. So the idea is we're going to take our polynomial, put the terms in groups, and we're going to see if we can factor out a common term from each group. Once you factor out, you recombine what's left. Now, if we take a look at our polynomial, there's a pattern, 3 minus 2, 3 minus 2. So we're going to try to factor out 3x minus 2 from each of those groups. From the first one, we'll have an x cubed. Second one, we'll have leftover 1. So I recombine, I'll have x cubed plus 1. Now, factoring x cubed plus 1, we could try to take some simple numbers. So of course you try 0, 1, minus 1. Minus 1 is going to be a hit. So that means x minus minus 1, or x plus 1, divides into x cubed plus 1. Okay, we can long divide, or you can use synthetic division. So for the synthetic division, the way that works, I take my root, so it's a minus 1, we put it over here. Then I'm going to take the coefficients of x cubed plus 1. Okay, for the powers that don't appear, we're going to use coefficient 0. So I'll be x cubed gets a 1, x squared gets a 0, x gets a 0, and then I have a 1. Then what we're going to do is, I'm going to add down each column, and then what I do is, once I go down to the bottom of the column, we're going to multiply by our root, record the product in the middle row, next column. So what happens is, we go down this column, I get a 1. Multiply by a minus 1, I get a minus 1, I put it there. Add down this column, I get a minus 1. Multiply by minus 1, I get a 1, I put it there. Then I add down this column, I get a 1. Multiply by minus 1, get a minus 1 here. Then we add down and I end up with a 0. Okay, that 0 is good. That's going to be our remainder when we do the long division. So that means we're going to have that x plus 1 divides into x cubed plus 1. The way I read this is, okay, this here's our original, that's x cubed plus 1, is equal to x minus your root, so it's going to be x plus 1. And then the way I go along the bottom is, we're going to start one degree less than the original. So this is going to be x squared minus x plus 1. Okay, plus the remainder, but the remainder is 0, so we can ignore it. So what I just pulled out of this synthetic division is, x cubed plus 1 equals x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. Okay, so we move to the next step. We want to pull this quadratic apart. So I go to our quadratic equation. So the roots are going to be negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So that's going to leave me with 1 plus or minus the square root of minus 3 over 2. Square root of minus 3, normally we're not allowed to use that. Okay, that would be no roots. But since we're looking for factorization over complex numbers, we can take that minus 3 and write it as minus 1 times 3. So square root of 3 is going to be there. And then square root of minus 1 is what we call i. So our roots are going to be 1 plus or minus square root of 3i all over 2. For our complete factorization, okay, first I'll pull the 3 out of this so the root that we're using is clear. It's going to be 3 x minus 2 thirds x plus 1 x minus 1 plus square root of 3i over 2 x minus 1 minus square root of 3i over 2. So that's our complete factorization. Now, if you missed the grouping trick, what can you do? If you notice, our polynomial has all integer coefficients, so we can appeal to the rational roots test. So if there's any rational roots at all, they're going to have to appear in a certain form. So we take the last term, so it's going to be 2. We can have the divisors of that, so it would be 1 or 2, over the divisors of the leading term, which is a 3. So all of our rational roots are going to be the form plus or minus, okay, 1 or 2 over 1 or 3. That means we're looking at eight possibilities for rational roots, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, 
plus or minus one third, plus or minus two thirds. So your work from there is, you're gonna have to try out each of those in our polynomial, and that's a little bit of work. You'll get hits when you put in a minus one, so you get three plus two minus three minus two equals zero. That's not so bad. The two thirds, you need to do a little bit of work. So this will eventually crush down to zero. So both of these roots appear when you use a rational roots test. Then you can take your two roots, use synthetic division to break it down to the quadratic that we get here. 